Hello everyone, Agent of Doubt here, and normally I like to talk to you guys about things that I have more of an expertise in, like things that I've studied on YouTube, things that I've uh, been watching the trends of, things that I do for work, things like that, right? I talk about the feels a lot, right? But today I'm going to talk to you about my grasp of simple, basic economics, okay? And I'm going to say, the sky is not falling, and the YouTube advertiser money will return. And and how do I have such a, a, a confidence about this? Well, nature abhors a vacuum, okay? And one of the basic premises of economics is, if there is some money to be made, someone will be there to make it, right? Basic capitalism, basic... Uh, economics, those advertisers who pulled their money from YouTube are leaving behind great advertising space, okay? And there will be advertisers who look at this situation and say, how can we distance ourselves from this, this uh, panic about racism and, and ads being put on uh, unsavory videos. They will look at a way to distance themselves from that and they will proceed accordingly because they're going to get a really fucking good deal on ad rates, right? So whereas I was getting like a 1.8 CPM when Walmart and Coke were putting ads on YouTube, these new companies can come in and, and bid to where I would get like a 1.7 CPM, right? So they're going to get a little bit of a break on that. There, there's this giant vacuum of ad space that is, you know, there to reach all of these people that, that cuts through ad blockers because they know if they, if a person has blocked ads, they, they don't count that as an ad play, right? So they're going to get as many ad plays as they pay for. Ad blockers doesn't mean shit. Uh, it will be targeted demographics. Google has worked so hard at collecting information about you, you know, it is one of the best ways to advertise. And the companies that realize that there is this giant gaping hole that needs to be filled and they can make money from it, they will start advertising, right? Yeah, this was a shakedown, but it's also happening at that certain time of year where advertisers probably should be pulling their ad money anyways. They should make it seasonal because, you know, there's there's normally this drop-off in sales, you know, January to uh, May, you know. So I don't think that this is uh, something that people need to be uh, screaming, the sky is falling, the sky is falling, YouTube is over, YouTube is over party. You know, fuck that. The advertisers will come back because they will see the value in it and they will be able to put all of these uh, controversial news stories in their proper context and either address them up front before they go into it or they will just dismiss it as and say, uh, we don't care about you guys, you know, screaming about social justice and screaming about how there's hate groups that might be getting paid. Uh, we don't have anything to do with that. We're just a company trying to make money and we put ads on fucking YouTube. Shut the fuck up. There, are, there will be people who are strong enough with their business to be able to say that, and they won't buckle to public opinion. And those will be mostly the smaller companies. The larger companies will say, well, YouTube has done things to correct it, and we have accepted what they've done. you know, And we've also accepted a, a slight discount on jumping in on that giant gaping hole of advertising that can reach people, you know, um... This is not going to be the death of YouTube. This is just uh, actually probably cyclical. And, and year after year, we're going to see people talk about how their ad revenue has declined in the spring, you know, um, and how it ramps up during uh, November and December. Uh, people are not going to talk about, you know, how it ramps up during political seasons where there's a lot of political ad money being spent. People aren't going to talk about it when, when that happens. Let me, let me give you an example of why they're not going to talk about it, right? Um, 
my best example here, based on what I watch here on YouTube, would be Kyle Kalinske at Se Secular Talk, right? On April 4th, that was three days ago, he uh, started a Patreon, right? And he made a video, the title of which says, Secular Talk's YouTube revenue has been cut over 90%. I need your help, right? And then he goes on to say that uh, on that day he had made like 50 bucks off YouTube, which wasn't enough. You know, based on what he was making before and all of the investments that he had had made and all the commitments that he had made for this business of Secular Talk, the brand, right? He's got that studio that they rented out. Um, you know, they've got things to pay off. I get that, right? So in the comments section, uh, there was people who were asking, can you give us some basic numbers of where you were at before? And most of these larger YouTubers who are asking people to now jump over to their Patreon, right? They're not uh, saying what their numbers were because they don't want you to pay attention to that because they want you to just give, plainly. If you value their product, they want you to just give, right? But because Kyle was at least open a little bit to giving some numbers, because he's a little bit more honest than all the other uh, YouTubers that have been asking for Patreon money. In fact, he was a holdout until three days ago. He didn't even have a Patreon because he didn't like the concept. Right? He's doing this out of desperation. Because he was able to be a little bit more honest, he said that uh, the revenue had been cut over 90%, and he gave the, the figure that he had made 50 bucks that day. Well, that means that uh, hmm, if 50 bucks is 10% of what they were making before, then he was normally making around $500 a day. So $500 a day times 30, say, for, for one month of revenue, would have been da, 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 $15,000 per month. Guess where his Patreon is right now? 15600 per month. In three days, he's been able to get that many pledges. I don't know how much money he's actually going to get from that. You know, time will tell. He probably will get a little bit more. But uh, that $15,600 a month works out to almost $200,000 a year, and I'm pretty confident that he's going to make it to that level. $200,000 a year for that Secular Talk channel. Um, not saying it's not worth it. He he actually has a pretty good average of like almost four thousand people donating. So when you when you do the math, like all of these are tiny donations. He's like the fucking Bernie Sanders of Patreon donations, you know, with a, with a very low average of of each donation. And uh, I think that's very fitting because he's making you know that new uh, Democrat club. You know, where where it's only going to be uh, supporting Democrats who don't take corporate money. So, yeah, look at that math, right? And then realize the ads will come back, right? It's just simple economics. The ads will come back. So, virtually overnight, in, in three days' time, he's been able to get a Patreon account that now totally replaces all of the, the revenue they used to get, right? Based on the math of, of what he said and what people are saying in his description, you know, don't be an idiot, he, he's already explained it enough, right? And and how those comments are, are left alone, and he's not trying to correct all that. So so people have a pretty good grasp of what he was making, and, and we can see what he's making now. He's, he's completely replaced it, and... The ads will come back. So, when they do, he has just doubled the amount of revenue he's getting. Doubled. When the ads come back, is he going to say, you know what, I've now decided to shut down my Patreon? There's a chance, because it's Kyle Kalinske. He's a little bit more, uh, I guess, that way than any other YouTuber, right? Any, any other big YouTuber that has a Patreon, he's, he's one that does not want to be uh, beholden to people who are donating money to him. Um, he doesn't want those strings. I get that. But given that the average donation there is under $7, if you if you were to do the math, maybe he won't feel that the strings are there and he'll keep it. So then his, his money's going to be doubled. 
doubled because of this panic, because of people saying, ah, this guy is falling. When the ad money comes back, his money's going to be doubled, right? I'm okay with him making money. I'm subscribed to him. I think you guys should be too. Uh, he, he covers a lot of news stories. Um, uh, it is kind of opinion talk, you know? He comes from a certain perspective, but... There, there are stories that are important to people from a certain perspective, and I, I do value that, right? Take what, I, what I'm saying about his numbers that I was able to glean from that and then apply it to every big YouTuber that is uh, now pimping their Patreon. If they are using this fear of, ah, YouTube's over party, you know, and in the end, they end up doubling their money because they get people to commit to uh, donating to their Patreon. And they get the ad revenue when it comes back. How do you feel about that? What I'm going to say is, take a look at the totals that people are making when you're deciding where to give your money to and, and uh, plan accordingly and try to support up-and-coming YouTubers. Not me. I'm I'm still in a good place. A um, couple videos ago, I was showing off my my new gimbal, right? That uh, is pretty good at stabilizing this thing and and making it so that I will never have shaky videos again, right? You know, I've got enough money to buy some toys, and if you guys still want to give me money, that's fine. Um, it pretty much goes to uh, terabyte drives where I save people's videos and then bring you know history back to YouTube and you know don't let people forget about things that's what I do right and some of you love that but look at those those YouTubers who really are being affected by this right now or or maybe could improve their content the, what I would like for people to really consider and I've said this before on my channel if your money is going to make their content better and you're going to enjoy their content better, then give to it. If you think that that person is going to quit their job and then start doing three uh, Google Hangouts per day with uh, a lower consistency of good content, then maybe think about giving that money to somebody else who's going to keep doing what you like them doing, right? Um... That's how I would look at it, uh, and I'm not going to begrudge anyone for making any money, you know, off of any any kind of uh, fans that they're getting. But think about uh, wh where your money is going to, and and how much you think a person should be making. Seriously, um, I, I know a lot of people would 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 say, you know, it's none of your business what they're making. You could have, for the same amount of money, five good YouTubers making the content that you like, that you like than, you know, one YouTuber getting all of that money uh, because they were better at uh, pimping themselves and maybe uh, pushing a, uh, a narrative of fear at, at the right moment when there's a, a so-called crisis going on, you know? Think about where your money's going and, and what will improve your viewing experience. Um, myself, I end up giving up more money to uh, causes that I come across on YouTube than I actually make off of YouTube because I have a day job and it funds my fun, right? Uh, and in the link in the description below, I'm going to leave a link to uh, Formerly, what you guys might have known as Thunderbolt 94 or Roman Missile Exegy. And uh, he went on from, from YouTube to uh, concentrate on his grad school studies. And he's going to be one day uh, a really great English professor. But uh, right now, his his mom just got Graves' disease this year, and or this past year. And they are like four months behind on their property tax on the home that they've had for decades and you know California loves to uh, use property tax to remove people from their homes and uh, I guess regentrify whole neighborhoods uh, with people who have new money and 
if you don't want that to happen to a YouTuber that you might have liked the content from years ago, and, and somebody who uh, I clashed with a little bit, um, many of your favorite YouTubers back in the day clashed with, um, there's, there's a link in the description box if you want to see him uh, succeed in life and do something else. And, and maybe maybe he'll come back and thank you all by uh, clashing with us once again because, you know, he's going to that, that fancy university, San Diego State University. Maybe he's going to come up with better arguments for uh, the things that he believes. Maybe, you know. And if, if that were the case, then I would consider that money well spent and uh, good entertainment value for your buck. Think about these things, and I will talk to you guys tomorrow.